thee. I will teach thee. In the way thou shalt go, I will guide thee with my heart. Wisdom is from instruction. That's our anchor scripture for the month. For the year. I will instruct thee. I will teach thee in the way thou go. I will guide thee with my heart. We've been reading 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 1 to 12. Chapter 1, verse 6 to 12. But today we want to take another scripture from 2 King chapter 3. Sorry, 1 King chapter 3. It's the same story. 1 King chapter 3. Same story of Solomon's wealth. Solomon's wisdom. 1 King chapter 3. 1 King chapter 3. We're reading very quickly from verse uh, 3. I'll read quickly. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statue of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in nine places. And verse 4. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was a great high place, a thousand burnt offering, the Solomon offered upon that altar. In the Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream of the night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee, a fruit, in righteousness, in uprightness of heart, with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, thou hast given a son to sit on the throne, as it is this day. And now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father, and 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 but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered, nor counter, counted. They must give thee for the thy servant an understanding act to judge thy people that may discern between good and the bad for what is able to judge this is so great a people and the speech pleased the law Solomon had asked that the Solomon asked and asked this thing and God said to him that because thou asked this thing thou hast not asked for them said the long life neither ask riches nor for the for thyself nor has the life of the enemy but thou hast, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy word. I have given thee a wise and understanding heart. That's the point today. A wise and understanding heart. So that there was, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee had any arise unto thee. And I have also given thee which thou hast not asked, both which is honor, and there shall not be any among the kings unto the all the day, all thy days. Brethren, when a man has a wise and understanding heart, it wise and understanding heart is from where wisdom of God proceeds. With wise and understanding heart in any career, in any business, in any ministry, prosperity comes automatically. Men and women will bless you automatically. And last week we said, we said in, in that first king chapter 10, first king chapter 10, we read last week, verse 22. First king chapter 10, verse 22. We read last week the first king chapter 10, verse 22. And the word of God said, uh, first king chapter 10, verse 23, sorry. First King chapter 10, verse 23. And the word of God said, King Solomon exceeds all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. And that wisdom what we have been talking about. King Solomon exceeded all the kings on the earth on riches and wisdom. And we said last week that wisdom is that we've been saying that wisdom is the correct application of knowledge. And we said Solomon wrote over 3,000 proverbs. And some of these proverbs, there are a lot of learning points in it. And tonight, we want to proceed. We, last week, we talked about Solomon's wisdom that leads to enlargement. You know, the essence of this is that our, the wisdom of Solomon leading to enlargement. Because by reason of the wisdom he, he wrote, 3,000 of them, people come, by the time you read verse 1 Kings chapter 10, by the time you read from verse 23 to the end, 
men and women came all over the world to learn about his wisdom. And once they come, they bless him. By first King chapter 10, verse 1 to 10, Queen Sheba came to try him. And when he, when he answered all the questions, Queen Sheba still gave him gifts that he brought. He said, and as I did last we said, he came, Queen Sheba gave him $3 million equivalent worth of gold. So the world is looking for people who have knowledge and that can be useful to their business, their career. So we have that knowledge, they will pay for it. Praise the Lord. Without you even asking them. So today we said Solomon has several wisdom. There's wisdom for enlargement. He has wisdom for daily life living that also helps us to enlarge, to, be, to control our lives so that we can be able to grow, grow financially, grow spiritually, and live long. And we said last week, we started about parental advice. One of the things that Solomon made mention about is he said a man, a young man, a young can enlarge if he listen to the parental advice. So when a young man, a young woman listen to the advice of his spirit for direction in life, he will not get it wrong. He said the parental advice is very important to succeed and excel in life. Parental advice for those parents who are children of God, who are not uh, asking to go for witchcraft. So he said, if you read Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 to 24, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 to 24, Solomon said, parental cancer lead to protect life. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 to 24, he said, when you listen to your parental advice, your life is protected. You will not die before your time. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20, it says, he said, my son, keep your father's commandment. Forsake not the law of thy mother. He said, bind them content upon thy heart, and bind them upon thy neck. What will happen? In verse 22, he said, when thou goest, it shall lead thee. When you listen to the commandment of your parents, do it this way, don't do it this way. He said, it will lead you in the path you should go. It will direct you. It shall keep you from evil. Parental counsel, especially for those of us who are the young generation, they call us millennia, they call us Gen C. Ah, when I was coming like this, from when I was coming this evening, I was listening to, I was on online conference, and uh, somebody was making a jest that uh, you know that in these days. A man is always glued to his to his laptop, and uh, the wife said, "You don't know how to take care of your wife." So the man went to Google. Google, how can I make my wife happy? Google, the Google now repeat weights. <laughs> there are advices. There are counsel for growth, counsel for direction in life. You can't get in Google. There is no. There is no parable in Gogu. The wisdom of elder is not in Gogu. You can't find it there. There is for children. There is nothing you are going through now that your parents have never gone through. Even though there is IT, there is internet, but they say that one they don't sell it. You don't acquire it by searching Gogu. Is by experience. That is why when a child is growing up, when I say a child, maybe a student, a young student, maybe somebody is already working, you are just working, you are in middle management level. When you are going, or you are at the top level, when you are going at the particular direction, the elders who have passed through the direction you have passed before, when they see the way you are navigating, we are saying. <laughs> My son, my daughter, don't go that way. Say, no, 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 you people are old school. Ah. <laughs> because they know where that is going to end. There are some moves. There are some steps. 
young people, mentees, take a lie. The elder knows where he's going to lead them to. Because they've gone through it before. That's the experience. So those who listen to parental advice, those who lean to listen to mentor's advice, a elder's advice, they can never got it, got it wrong in direction of life. The only have sufficient guidance. The only have accessible to instruction. If you listen to them, they can guide you. They have wisdom to say, this is how to go for study, to succeed in life. This is how to go to university. This is how to go to excel in business and career. If you listen to them, you will never get it wrong. You go, you have an advantage to move faster than the friends. That's number one. Parental advice, when you follow them, lead to divine direction in life. You know, when people give you advice, there are two options you have. You listen and discard. You listen and critique. And there are some explanation that cannot give you when you are criticizing. You will just keep quiet. Because, but they know where that is going to end. So parental advice, Solomon said, it will always lead you to divine direction. It's valid when it's coming from born again parents. Number two, he said, Solomon also said, their parental advice on that he guide young one for immoral activities. Their parental advice, Solomon said, when you lead to your parent, parent instruction, they know the level at which a teenager is susceptible to immorality. They begin to advise, don't go this way. If the if teenager listen, she will escape the, the pit of the, the plan of the young bad boys. They know when an adolescent gets to a level she or she is susceptible to immorality. They will cancel. Don't go this way. If they listen, they will escape the pit for the, 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 the pit set for them by the bad boy and bad girls. They know when an adult does not yet marry is going to fall into a wrong and he marry. They say, ah, don't go that way. That one is not correct. I say, no, 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 no. Solomon gives several advices. In Proverbs 6 24, Solomon said, Keep thee. He said, he said, you want to say to he said the parental advice to keep thee from evil woman. From the flattery of the tongue of a stained woman. Solomon says, when you are a young man and a young lady begin to flatter you, it's likely to be a prostitute. She wants to destroy something from you. She wants to steal something from you. When a young boy and a young girl say, oh, you're very handsome, very intelligent. I like you. You're good. Ah, he likes your destiny. He wants to destroy your destiny. It's a, it's a misnomer. For a girl to be to be flattering a man in our world, in Africa, is not normal. You keep it to yourself. So when a young lady comes from nowhere and begins to flatter you, oh, you are likely to be talking to a prostitute, an immoral girl. Wrong! That's what Solomon said. If you are a young boy or young girl and you meet a man a young boy, and he keep on telling you all manners of sweet things. Is likely he wanted to see your back, and after seeing your back, he would disappear. Solomon say, "Wrong, wrong." In, in his, if you look at his counsel, he said, "Don't be carried." In verse twenty-five, in Proverbs six, he said. Lost not after her beauty. He said, All the glitters are not gold. That's what the elder says. All things that glitter are not gold. When you see a beautiful woman, don't be carried away by her beauty. When you see a very handsome man, you might be you might be talking to the prince of the coast. <laughs> Without knowing. Solomon said, When you see unusual beauty, 
pause a little bit and say, God, have mercy on you. Don't be carried away with beauty. He said, don't be carried away with beauty. And these days, you know, unfortunately, what Paul Solomon said here is the order of the day. This day, you see all manner of eyelids, eyelashes. Meanwhile, in the days of Solomon, eyelashes and eyelids are all mark of a prostitute. See, today, and through the truth of the matter, young girls, if your, if your, your makeup is loud, it can be tantamount to be a prostitute. You are likely to be attracted to wayward men. That's why the Bible says everything must be done in modesty. So Solomon is saying, when you see a lady uh, with a, a heavy makeup, it's likely to be a immoral child. Whether knowingly or knowingly. Or whether intentionally or not intentionally. So Solomon said, be run away from prostitute. So as far as Solomon is concerned, when a woman uses every makeup, the Bible tells us, even Jezebel, the, the way she was described in 1 Kings chapter 19, was like every makeup with all manner of big earring, big gold. So he said in verse 26, he said, for by means of a warish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and that does say we own for the precious life. When you see an adulterer woman, an adulterous woman, he is looking for glorious destiny to destroy. Someone said, This is a parental cancer advising you to run away from adultery. Pray that somebody will listen to this in Jesus' name. Pray the Lord will help us and listen to the Jesus very, very quickly. Solomon has another wisdom that helps us in the conduct of life. He has wisdom that he is that when you apply this knowledge every day, you'll be wise. There's wisdom to con of conduct in life. There are wisdom to conduct your daily activity. For instance, in Proverbs chapter 20, in Proverbs chapter 20, Solomon talked about this meaning of wine. And that's why many of us believers don't understand it. When you understand the wisdom of Solomon on wine, what Solomon says about wine, a man with 700 wives and 300 concubines, he is not talking empty statement. He's gone through it before. Solomon said, if you like drinking wine, especially the alcoholic, he said it will make mockery of you. How? Because when you drink wine, you'll be tipsy. You start saying anything anyhow. He said when you drink too much, it will make you to live a riotous life. And when you drink to too poor, he said the person, anyone that drinks to so can never be wise. So no, if you're a drinker of alcohol, First of all, you are subject to mockery because by the time you, you are drunk, you misbehave. He said, You live a riotous life with me, you spend money anyhow. And he said, You can never be wise. Because why? All your money is going to be spent in drinking. And you will not be able to have savings. You will not be able to know your left from right. Proverbs 20, verse 1 says, Wine is a mocker. When you drink wine, alcohol is a mocker. It will mock you. Say strong drink is for raging. And whatever is deceived, therefore, is not wise. So for those of you who are lovers of wine, someone is saying you are joking with mockery. People will be mocking you, whether you're present or behind you. When you drink so heavily, people will just be looking at you. Since your life will not balance, you can't be wise. That's the because every day some people cannot do without drinking wine. A man that drinks wine every day or alcohol every day, when is he going to be able to take, to study, to assess knowledge? Is he a man that has drunk 
at his deep seat that he slept off on the floor inside the gutter. Is that when I receive revelation of enlargement? No way. Is he a man that drank and was tipsy? He doesn't know he left from sin, right? By the time they steal money from his pocket, he doesn't even know because he's drunk. That kind of man, he cannot enlarge. If he enlarges, he, he, he can't sustain it. So we want to say, if you if you patronize a prostitute, you cannot last. If I say a man, that's what he said in that Proverbs 626. You prison that position, then you, you have you already killed yourself. That's why that's that's the simple way to describe it. In fact, if you look at Proverbs 63, he said, Adultery will take away your honor and dignity. Then I said, if you are a man that likes patronize, he said, adultery will take away your honor and dignity. Every adulterous woman is not respected. Every adulterous man is not as respected. No honor, no dignity. Proverbs 6.23. Proverbs 6, Every Go and look at those who committed adultery. There is always a scar in their life. That's why you must run away. So don't know why he's saying it. He said, it is going to be a scar. Because a man that's adulterous, a woman that's adulterous, we only spend money for their prostitute. The money that's all to be investing, we spend it to be giving another woman. You cannot invest. That was cannot enlarge financially. A man committed that drugs, he will leave you with a scar, a wound forever. Proverbs 6 23. It will be there forever. That's what Paul must say. You commit adultery, whether intentionally or intentionally, forever is a scar in your life. That's why you must run for an adultery. Verse 3 says, A wound and dishonor shall get thee, and so shall not be wiped away. The reproach of adultery will never be wiped away. So therefore, when you leave office, when office close at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock, you went to the beer parlor to drink, because those are some people do daily. Daily, some people go, after work, they go to the club. At the club, they will take a bottle. A club, they will say, wait, we go to club to do business, to get connection. Why they are getting connection in the business? People are drinking alcohol. You also drink alcohol. In the name of what we are looking for business, looking for contract. As you drinking alcohol, strange women are around there. You move near them. He said, nobody enlarges by drinking every day and be with a strange woman. It's not going to happen. They're going to leave you with the one. And that's the one thing that's very fun. So those who have the habit of leaving their workplace every day and zooming to the club, and when they're in the club, say their business partner is coming because it's only in the club that business partner will come. They don't go to any other place. The business partner will come. The people will go, that's where they will come. I say, oh, we want something. No, I don't want. Ah, no, alcohol doesn't kill. Just take a little. From a little, you graduate and. Trust in every club. Strange women are already there. Plus you are there. And many of them are, are they come with uh, enchantment and divination. They, they are the ones that will do eye to you. Solomon says, you, you live your life daily by drinking and sleeping with womanizer. He said you will not have dignity. You will not have honor. Say there will be wound in your life. And enlightenment cannot happen. Growth cannot happen. Modernity cannot happen. He said, when you commit adultery, you are a fool. Proverbs 32, he said, those who commit adultery with a woman lack understanding. It that they destroy soul. That's what he said. He said, you are a fool when you commit adultery. And when you do it, you don't know you are destroying your soul. Because the Bible says, your body belongs to God. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, he said your body is the temple of Holy Ghost. You must not allow any other thing there. So when you go and take your body and sleep with an adulterer, an adulterer, oh my God, you have destroyed your relationship with God. You have destroyed your soul. And that kind of person cannot receive revelation for enlargement. That's what King Solomon said. Because many people, as I said, every day people, as we are talking now, some people are in the, they're in the club. 
be the new businessman as change women around there. If I most businessmen will tell you, oh, you want business for me, come to this club gradually. So I'm saying it's not the way to enlarge. It's not the way to grow. It's a way of destruction. Because why? Is the adultery with you lead you to destroy your soul? Is that why? Is that because God has you own your soul? So when you play trade your soul for anything, money, is that you are destroying your soul? Is that when you commit adultery, you know it's like you lack on you lack understanding, and it's like you a fool. See, adultery will take away your honor. It will take your uh, dignity. When the honor is go, gone, when dignity is gone, what remains? Nothing. When the honor is gone, dignity is gone, what remains? Nothing. So Solomon said, live your life daily, not by patronizing clubs to drink wine. Live your life daily, not by sleeping with an adulterer. And, uh, no. So live your life by staying, studying the word of God, studying the, listening to the, the spiritual father counsel, the spiritual father advices, your pastor counsel, your pastor, go to Bible study, go and pray, you don't have time. You have so much time to do. Don't go and spend your time in clubs. Don't go and be drinking every day because he said a wine, whoever drinks wine is mocking himself. He live a righteous life. And that person is not wise. And that person cannot enlarge. So you can see. What are the wisdom of Solomon? He so told us again. Daily basis, any man that will enlarge must develop relation with his superior. <laughs> that one is very serious. He said in Proverbs 20, verse 62. What chapter? It said the fear of a king is as the reign of a lion. Who whosoever provoke him to anger, sinning against his own soul. Your boss is like a, is like a king in the workplace. Is a king in your department. Is the overall heir. Solomon said, "Do everything not to provoke your boss to anger, because you cannot survive it." You cannot win a battle against your boss. That's why, you know, in the profession, in banking, where some of us belong to, there's a lot of so much respect to the elder for the boss. Because why? Your boss that you respected, you, you respected and honor, in your presence, can speak negative about you, even when you did not do anything against him. Not, not, not now when you're not provoking, he will spoil matters. I repeat, the reason, one of the reasons why those of us in banking profession has a high system and hold a lot of respect is that in this profession, your boss that you love so much, you respect her so much, you know, in some cases, he will speak bad about you outside when you are not there. Now, when you are not get him angry, he will do worse things. And every word spoken by your boss can delay your promotion for years. Every negative word spoken by your boss can extend your promotion for years. I have discovered that you cannot win a fight against your superior. It's not possible. You take it to the higher authority, they will only stand behind your superior. <laughs> they will say you are insubordinate. So, don't make your boss a god, but don't get him angry. Don't provoke him. Because why? It's a battle you can win. He can use the authority, his power, his influence to stop you, to delay your promotion, to truncate your career. And never, so long say, heaven will not say anything. Because the word of God admonishes us to respect our leader. <laughs> the word of God has 
admonish us to respect our leader. So therefore, if you diso if you if you are insubordinate to your superior, you misbehave to your superior, and your superior use his authority or use our authority, our influence to delay or to delay or to sack somebody. The only ghost will only comfort because it means you are not a good student of the Bible. Solomon advises us in relation with elders. <laughs> so if you if you read Bible very well, if you study the word of God very well, oh my god, you can never especially you read the book of Proverbs very well. You cannot you cannot be found one thing. No, 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 no. You read your scripture very Bible very well. Ah no. Beloved, nobody can take you in a can hold you to ransom. Because why? You know when to talk, when not to talk. You know when to put knife to your throat. I'm trying to look for that scripture. <laughs> that says when you are in the front of a king. Be put a knife to your truth. Know what you speak. Don't speak anyhow. Don't talk anyhow. Because you can never know. A single statement by you can cost you another 10 years delay. <laughs> a single statement by a phrase by you can cost another delay of the next 5, 6 years. So be careful. So no, you see, when you will live with superior every day, be careful how you relate with your boss. Don't get him angry because you know why. Some bosses know you are going far in life. They will deliver. There some bosses have got have got into their bus stop in life. Some leaders have got into their bus stop in life. They are going nowhere again. And they have seen the pattern of your life. They have seen this boy is likely to go farther than me. And some people are envious and jealous. And they want to provoke you to anger. Provoking to anger will also make you to misbehave and provoke them. So that they can have something against you. That's why King Solomon says, do everything. Respect. When is it the fear of the king? He said, respect him. Honor him. Let him say, well, I don't have anything to say about him. He's a good guy. He's very respectful. Let it be what we say. Let it not be that guy, that girl. He's a very bad person. He has bad manner. Hey, don't let it be your own portion. Don't let any boss say you have bad manners. Because that's a recipe for destruction. What is again Solomon says? On daily, he said daily, make sure, how do you avoid having clashing with your boss? Make, how do you have a strong relation with your boss? Solomon says, and Ibu, the word of God said, Hebrew 12, 14. When a man pleases God, so he said, he said, Pope 11, Hebrew 11 14. He said, Live peace with all men. Without holiness, no man can see God. Be in peace with your boss. Respecting every boss like those who respect them. When you respect your boss, when you honor him, he can't have issue against you. Even if you are not doing too much well. Say, follow peace all men. Without them, follow peace with him. When you respect him and honor him, you can't have issue with him. Daily, boss in the workplace, boss in the business, boss in the ministry, once you maintain respect, you respect them. That's what Paul said, the fear of the king. The respect. When you respect them, first of all, most of the issues they will raise against you, they will not raise against you. 
How do I live daily? Solomon say, avoid strife. I think we'll, we'll do this one tomorrow in the, <laughs> in the I just let me in the this recovery service. How do you have Solomon say, how do you live daily for enlargement? Solomon say, avoid strife. Oh my god. Say, avoid strife. In that Proverbs chapter 20, verse 23, he said it is honor for a man to cease from strife. It's an honor for a man to cease from strife. But every fool will be meddling, will get involved in strife. Solomon said, You'll be respected at work. You'll be respected in business. You'll be respected in ministry when you don't get involved in strife. What is strife? Unhealthy competition in workplace, unhealthy condition in career, unhealthy condition in vocation. Meaning, what is strife? Being angry or bitter, disagreement over little, little things, always in conflict, always fighting, fighting for your position, fighting for your right, getting angry. Solomon said, It's only a fool that does that. Proverbs 20, verse 3. Say only a fool that always get involved in conflict, disagreement, fights, opposition. Say only a fool. And a fool cannot enlarge. <laughs> a fool cannot enlarge. If he enlarges, he can't sustain the enlargement because the foolishness will bring him down. We will see more of this tomorrow, even at this recovery meeting. But there's a lot to learn. Avoid strife. Don't get involved in strife. Don't be involved in unhealthy competition in the workplace, in the business ministry. Don't involve in argument, conflict, disagreement. Run away from they drain energy, they drain life, they drain spiritual energy. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Father, we want to thank you tonight for speaking to us. Thank you, Lord, for the proverbs, the wisdom we have seen today. Wisdom to respect elders. Wisdom to be, to not to, 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 not to move near wine. Wisdom to run away from immoral people. Father, we thank you for speaking to us tonight. Father, this will not just be that we hear them. We will be a draw of them in Jesus. The grace to stay in the war, to do the war. Grant to us in Jesus' name. As your people go tonight, reveal yourself to them. Show yourself mightily in Jesus' name. Daddy, I pray, O oh Lord, that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for everyone that is struggling with adultery, Father, please set them free. For everyone that is struggling with adultery, Father, deliver them. Let the world set them free. The world they have tonight will deliver them from adultery. Those who think they can make money from adulterous life, daddy, they've had the world tonight. Let the world begin to shine as light unto them. Let the world begin to shine as light in Jesus' name. As men that, that are in the prostitution business, they've had the world tonight. That prostitution is a darkness. It's a foolish people that get engaged. Father, deliver. They are not foolish people. They are wisdom people. They are wise people. Father, deliver anyone here from every form of adulterous life, position, life, immoral activity in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father Lord. Because those who are into immorality, drunkards cannot enlarge. If they enlarge, they can't sustain the enlarge in the enlargement in the name of Jesus. We want to enlarge and sustain our enlargement. So deliver from every drinking habit. Deliver your people from every form of very little wine at one time. Set them free from it, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you, sir. Is there anybody we here tonight? You are here to surrender your life to Jesus Christ? Or you are ready to adore trust life? You want to say, God, I'm sorry. I don't want to live this life again. Just pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. How that your blood wash away my sin. I would declare I'm born again and say, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. Tomorrow, by the grace of God, at 1 p.m. East African time, 9, 11 a.m. West African time and 2 p.m. GST time. We'll be praying and be talking on our destiny. What we need to do to is also principle of enlightenment and destiny. Join us tomorrow by the grace of God at 1 p.m. East African time.
and 11 p.m. West African time. Through PNM. The Lord bless you. Keep your and to shine upon you.